This time on My Dream Farm, I'm helping a young couple determined to start a new farming life in the beautiful Usk Valley in South Wales. The prospect of seeing our own cattle on the land is the beginning of the realisation of the dream. The River Usk runs from the Brecon Beacons down to the sea at Newport, flanked in the Vale of Usk in Monmouthshire by rich agricultural land. This is a story of a family with many struggles to overcome. That's not so unusual in agriculture, but they've got hold of a piece of land and they don't really know what to do with it, but they need to because they've got money problems. They're also bringing up a young family. But there's another aspect which is perhaps more common than we acknowledge, but not really often talked about, and that is the struggle with mental ill health. Nick and Talitha Bailey Brain live near the pretty town of Usk, where their two year old daughter Emily was born. Come on, four wheel drive, she's off, look. I grew up surrounded by fields with cows and uh, and we had chickens, and I would just like my children to grow up in, in the same sort of environment. Talitha, known by everybody as T, grew up on a small holding in Zimbabwe. My parents grew quite a lot of uh, tropical plants, you know, things like uh, mulberries, guavas, mangoes, and I've always had a yearning for that ever since I came here. <laughs> T currently works three nights a week as a nurse. Whilst Nick has his own building and demolition business since being medically discharged from the RAF after a tour of duty in Kosovo. It was horrific, absolutely horrific time. I put my parents through hell. Nick has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, also known as manic depression, and experiences both bouts of black despair and episodes of manic, reckless activity. You lose touch with reality to such a degree mind racing all the time, totally manic, absolutely manic. Nick and T bought Comeback Farm three years ago, which comprises of two fields a couple of miles down the road from their cottage, hoping that the connection to the land would be therapeutic for Nick. But they have absolutely no farming experience. I think our knowledge is, you know, it's quite basic. It's really from what we've watched on TV and the few books that we've read. Yeah. But they do have lots of ideas for the farm, mostly based around Nick's plan to build a large barn to store his many vehicles. However, buying the land has stretched their finances to breaking point. This is where I come in, because they urgently need to make some income and hope that I can help them do this from their land. It's the 1st of June, and summer has come to the valley when I make my first visit to see Nick and T. Knowing of Nick's daily struggle with bipolar disorder, I fervently hope that this lovely landscape will nourish rather than bury their dreams. Hello. Oh, Hello. Don't stop talking. <laughs> Your fields are these, are they? Yes, yeah. yeah, this one in front of us and the one further, further back. The Bailey Brains live in a cottage down the road, and opposite is a plot where Nick currently stores his vehicles. Comeback Farm is a couple of miles away. It comprises 17 acres divided into two fields bounded by tall hedges, with an existing but rather derelict barn. The land slopes up from the entrance, which is where Nick plans to build a new barn. But at the moment, the site of this barn is occupied only by a huge pile of rubble. Was this rubble here when you came? No, no. Um, it's come from a house that uh, got knocked down. And it was just Nick salvaged this and a mass of used timber to recycle for his barn. This is roughly where the barn is going, and we want to track down the one side yeah. so I can have vehicles coming in and going out. And, and what vehicles are we talking about? Um, mainly my little lorry. I've got a 17-ton lorry, um, my JCB. Why don't you... Walk me around and tell me all your plans. 
Because I'm not a barn person. Yeah. I'm a land person. Yes, I'm a yeah. Person. Should we get the other shock out of the way? What's that? The other pile. Yeah. This all came from the same building. Nick right. seems obsessed with building the barn, but there is a rather chaotic feel to the place. And this includes some of his ideas for the land. This is a lovely field, isn't it? It's got a beautiful sweep to it. Well, we've looked at that slope, and someone mentioned to us the other day about this land surfing. So I think that would be fantastic because you can. I'm not quite sure, but it sounds fun. I think it's time to introduce a touch of agricultural reality here. What's your experience? Have you ever kept animals? No. Um, my parents had a you know small holding in Zimbabwe. Right. And uh, they had a few chickens. I can remember feeding them, and uh, that's about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why I bought the land, to have my own cows, my own sheep, my own pigs. I can empathise with that all right. And looking at the quality of their pasture, I see great potential for cattle here. And the perfect ones for a beginner like Nick would be a British breed that I keep on my own farm, the Dexter. Dexters are the smallest breed of British cattle and come in two types, short and long-legged. They're very hardy and thrive on relatively poor grazing and are happy to stay outdoors all year round. And because of their small, light frame, do little damage on soft ground. Although they're not primarily dairy cattle, a Dexter cow will yield at least nine litres of milk a day, thus making her an ideal house cow for the smallholder. But Dexters are usually reared as beef cattle, producing meat which is delicious and highly sought after. Next, we go to look at the upper field. So, but it's a very, very nice spot. Oh, isn't thank it? you. <laughs> you can make hay up here, you know. Well, that's, that was my plan at the moment. Now, one of my concerns is these buttercups. And why does do that we need you? to get rid of them? No. Well, no, of course you don't. The single best thing you can do in, in, in immediate term is let the grass grow long. Hay is made from grass that is cut and dried in the sun before being gathered and stored and is an ideal way of preserving the surplus summer grazing. The great thing you've got here is cash. That, that's money. That's cash. That's the fuel. <laughs> that's the product. It's costing you nothing. Yeah. Quite a lot. Finally, I'm taken to a wild, overgrown hollow. I was always aware that I'm going to have to come in here with my digger and dig this out. But, yeah. Do you know what you could do in here? Mm -hmm. If you wanted to clear it, put yeah. pigs in here. Yeah. It, it's a thought. Pigs would love it and they would clear it. That is it. great. Mm -hmm. Rearing his own livestock might be Nick's dream, but there's also enough land here to accommodate T's desire to grow fruit. Right. Trees and fruit are something that yeah. would really interest you, aren't they? I do, yes. I think my, my bit is the gardening bit. And but I think that's important. I think I that think could be a big a bit, bit. Yeah, I think I'm mad on the animals and T's mad on the growing. So between the two of us, we can sort we of make a good team. Can't we? Yeah. yeah. This is such a beautiful spot. And of course, you can see how the Nick and T immediately wanted to base their dreams and build them on this land but they do need to start to make it work. And Nick, with his ideas and his dreams, he's got such sort of attractive qualities that needs to be channeled into the land. The Bailey Brain family have owned 17 acres of pasture near Usk in South Wales for three years. But their only current plan for it is to build a huge barn. They have massive debts and want my help to get their dream farm up and running. But I want to be certain that Nick, who suffers from bipolar disorder, hasn't taken on too much. Well, there you are. You've got a lifelong illness. So what do you do? You decide to take on this enormous challenge. What happens if you have another attack? How, um, what, how does that fit in with running a complicated small holding? That's a really difficult question. It's going to break the dream. Right it is going to seriously um, compromise it. I think the key thing is that whatever plans we make, and whatever plans you execute, your health has to be the key importance, because otherwise it's not going to happen, is it? Emily? Given Nick's health, T is going to have a pivotal role in making this dream a reality. But that will just add another weight to what is already a heavy load. 
with Nick's illness, I mean, he's had tough times. The yes. chances are he could also, you know, there are tough times to come. How will you cope with that? I'm the calming influence, I think. <laughs> so I think, you know, I'd be able to, you know, work through the winters and help Nick through the tough times. You supply the steadiness. That's it, yes. It's time to lay out a simple plan to them, but not one that will stretch them too far. And although I know that Nick is obsessed with putting up his barn, this feels to me like a diversion. And anyway, they can't afford it. My advice to you, before you can start work on this land, is you make to make a decision. I think you shouldn't build your barn. The thing is, Monty, I've got to cut in on you with this. Part of the dream is having a big barn. I've got that. Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. In the short term, you do not need a big barn. If they put the barn on hold, I've got two easy proposals for making money from their biggest asset, which is the 17 acres of grass. You make hay in this field here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Worry about where you're going to store it later. Yeah, yeah. I would get half a dozen to ten the cattle. We'll see if we can find some mm -hmm. that you want. Uh, you know, if they're Dexters or if they're Ross Blacks or if they're whatever you're interested in, we can do that. Yeah. Then you're farming. I also think a few pigs would be a good option for them. They're easy to look after and would do an excellent job of clearing the overgrown scrub. T's desire to grow some fruit trees is, I think, an idea to encourage and could be a useful source of future income, especially if she can process the fruit in some way. Start to make this pay and then the dream can become reality. Yeah. As it is, it's pie in the sky, it's not going to work. A lot to think about, some very important decisions to make. Yeah, possibly we might not have been, you know, Too realistic, taking yeah. the correct route. And uh, I think for the time being, we've decided to hold the barn off. But the prospect of seeing our own cattle on the land is the beginning of the realisation yeah. of the dream. Whilst Nick and Tia are feeling enthusiastic and positive, this is a good time to send them both off to get instruction and a little experience in the different areas that they're interested in pursuing on their own land. Nick is going on a crash course to learn the basics of cattle farming, from handling skills to worming and tagging. His mentor for the day, Polly Conroy, took over her father's herd three years ago on the 200-acre family farm at Presswood in Buckinghamshire. Today, she runs a very successful internet meat business and sells to some of the best restaurants in London. Well, this is just a small part of your herd, is it? It uh, is, yes. Polly? Predominantly longhorn. You can see the, the purebred longhorns. Polly has a herd of 80 conventionally sized cattle, but it's the much smaller Dexters that Nick will help her with today. So these are your little, uh, little fellas then. Uh, this is Polly. my first herd. Dexters are very good for first timers, they're really low maintenance. Mm -hmm. They're very docile and sweet. Whilst Nick is dealing with Dexters, T has gone off to Pembrokeshire to meet Miranda James, who started her successful preserves business ten years ago from her cottage kitchen. What a lovely spot you have here, Miranda. It's absolutely beautiful. It is, and the view is... Although T's planned fruit trees will take several years to yield any usable produce, Miranda should inspire and show her how she can still be making her own fruit products before then, and that will generate vital income. As you can see, marmalades, chutneys, and the jams. Yeah. I should think it's about sort of 45, 50,000 jars yeah. a year I'm making. Over the years, it's just grown, and now I suppose I supply about 80, 80 different outlets. Oh, Come on. On Polly's farm, Nick is getting his first taste of routine cattle work with the Dexters. This experience will give him a brief taste of cattle husbandry and hopefully the confidence to run a small herd of Dexters of his own. This is a crush, really, Nick, for the horned animals. I'll just push her through, nice and gently. Just pull this? Yep, just keep it on her head, that's it. Yeah. And then wait till it clicks. That's it, she's in. Right. You have to have... Although called a crush, this essential piece of kit is only used to hold and restrain the animal when necessary and does them no harm. Um, you can see that she's happy. Yeah. The first job, yeah, worming, done is time done time two or three times a year on a non-organic farm like Polly's. We're treating for things like lungworm, right, right. ringworm. Yeah. 
Just start from in between the, the shoulder blades. Right there. That's, That's perfect, Nick. Well done. Yeah. There you go. You wound your first Dexter. You wound my first Dexter. Super. Meanwhile, in Miranda's kitchen, T is learning how to make ginger and mango chutney. Yeah, oh, I absolutely love mangoes. My parents had a mango tree in Zimbabwe. Oh, did yeah, they? Yeah, oh, absolutely brilliant. love them. Processing any fruit into a preserve will add value, even allowing for all the overheads. This is especially the case if you've grown the fruit yourself or foraged it from friends' gardens or from hedgerows. A couple of pounds of green tomatoes from the garden are almost impossible to give away. But make green tomato chutney with them, and you can sell it for three to four pounds a pound. Of course, prepping is time-consuming. Do you sometimes eat it when you're cooking it? <laughs> if they're over, smells uh, lovely. Yeah, if they're overripe, <laughs> yes, I do tend to. But, um, to make Miranda's mango and ginger chutney at home, you simply chop up fresh mangoes, and Miranda leaves the skins on, and place them in a large, heavy saucepan, adding sultanas, sugar vinegar, salt, dried chilies, garlic and ginger, which Miranda buys ready prepared. And the juices start coming out of the mango, then you've got to... Bring the mixture to the boil and then simmer for 20 minutes. You're then ready to bottle it, making sure your jars have been sterilized, which you can do on your hottest dishwasher setting, and that any air holes left after pouring in the mixture are prodded away. Is it enough? It is, <laughs> so far. <laughs> I think, get some recipes, Play around with what you want. Um, you can go foraging for your fruit because it's yeah. free. You can always do what I do, have an honesty jar on a table outside. Yeah. Or even go to car boot sales. Just start off small and yeah. build up. It's been a real eye-opener and inspiration for me. I think we might start off, you know, just by selling a, a few jar, jars of preserves or jam and maybe advertising, you know, uh, locally. And then hopefully by next year, once we become established, maybe start doing things on a larger scale. Good girl. Back at Polly's farm, Nick is paying careful attention to the next lesson, tagging. Mm. In this country, we have to have two tags, so one in right. each year. What do the numbers mean? That's my holding number, and you'll have one. Yeah, right. And then that's the unique identifier for the animal. Right. In the cattle ear, in the yeah. cow's ear, there's two veins that go up like that, and you right. can get in between them. So if you aim for the centre of the ear, yeah. you can't really get wrong. Mm. This might look brutal, but actually the animal only feels a brief nip, and then they're away. Down. That's it, now pull it to see <laughs> it's in properly. Yeah, yeah well done. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Hey. Oh, well done. Like a well-oiled machine. There you go. Yeah. So, how does Nick feel now, having spent his first day with Dexter's? Do you think we've put you off Dexter's or do you think you'll still get them? No, I can't wait, May. Can't wait. They're a great breed to have. Well, would it? <laughs> but although Nick says he can't wait, it seems he can, because he declines Polly's offer to buy some of these animals at a very good price and seems strangely unready to commit. However, he is following my advice to consider getting some pigs to clear their scrub and is heading off with tea to Mid Wales to visit a specialist pig breeder. Gosh, what a big place you've got here, Sue. Sue Jones took on the 40-acre Brynarth farm eight years ago and, with her son Chris, began rearing pedigree pigs. Oh, look at these. Oh, look at these. Sue takes them to see her large blacks, and Nick immediately falls under their spell. Oh, wow, look at those. We loved the look of her pigs. We certainly like the, the products that you get from pigs, ham, um, sausages. It's quite a versatile animal. Nick is clearly enthusiastic about Sue's pigs. And hopefully this visit will give him the confidence to try and keep a few pigs himself, even if he's not up to the cattle yet. It's the middle of July, and I'm returning to Usk to see Nick and T. The last time I was here, I didn't get any sense that they had a plan of action for their farm. So I made some simple suggestions. And this time, I'd like to see some pigs and even cattle on the land. Maybe they've made their hay by now, too. 
No sign of animals, no sign of activity, and no sign of Nick. Hmm. Hello, Monty. Nice Hi. to see you. And you. Nick was hoping to meet you, but he's, yeah. uh, he's got a surprise for you. Has he? Yes. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'll give Nick his due. He doesn't do his surprises by half. Hiya, Monty. You look oh, a bit daunted. Well, I'm surprised. <laughs> what have you got here? I'd hoped that Nick was off buying livestock. But it turns out he was scouting around for yet more vehicles to add to his collection. And this rackety mobile home is the latest to swell their ranks. And the lady who owned it, um, my mum teaches her daughter, and she said, oh, Mrs. Brainson. She said, oh, she said, wonderful. She said, you can have it. So they gave it to So you. they gave it to us, and we chuffed to bits. Well, you can't argue with the logic of having shelter for humans on this land, especially as it was free. But I'd rather he brought back some animals. Given Nick's unpredictable behaviour, it's really important that T doesn't get sidetracked from her plans to make jams and chutneys. Come on, let's have a look. And while growing fruit trees will take time, there's already some produce here on their land. Wherever you've got a hedgerow, yes. particularly if it's a bit overgrown, you're bound to have brambles, which are blackberries. Yeah. And the season is sort of September. There is a little bit. See, here we are. We've got blackberries here, we've got blackberries in the hedge here. At the moment, they've got these little pinky purple flowers, sort yes. of lilac flowers, which of course will become the fruit. Do you know, I never realised with blackberries. Yeah, I went and bought blackberry uh, did you? <laughs> bushes, I did. It's not just farmland that can be foraged for food. Parks, and roadsides and wasteland can all yield a wonderful free harvest. In June, elderflowers can be made into elderflower champagne and nettles make an excellent soup, particularly rich in iron. Early autumn is the best time for berries, particularly blackberries, which make delicious jams and pies. There are also slow berries from blackthorn, which when steeped in gin and sugar, make the best Christmas liqueur. Rowan berries from the mountain ash tree can be boiled and made into a lovely jelly, and rose hips make a fruity and nutritious tea or syrup. Despite T's steady enthusiasm, it is disappointing that there are no cattle, no pigs, or any sign of haymaking yet. Nothing seems to have happened. But when we get back to the cottage, Nick has another surprise. Oh, wow, look at those. Sue has arrived with four large black wieners. And if there's one thing guaranteed to raise your spirits, it's a pig. <laughs> Go on in, down you go. Nick wants to keep the pigs on this plot opposite his cottage, but I think the sooner they get up to the farm and start clearing that scrubby area, the better. Come on, piggies! Come on, piggies! Just come here to be alone for a minute or two to get a bit of, of calm, because when you're with Nick, the energy levels, not to say the chaos levels, are very high. And it's very demanding, although today you've got these pigs, which is great. But it's interesting, that's all happened on the day he knew I was coming to visit him. And all the things we talked about achieving up till now have sort of fallen by the wayside. But if I could just steer him into beginning something, seeing it through, it would help him ground himself. And this is the place that he must ground himself to. I'm in the Usk Valley in South Wales, trying to assist Nick and Talitha Bailey Brain to get their dream farm up and running. T's ambition is to grow and harvest fruit from this land, whilst Nick says that he wants to get animals onto it. But so far, not much has happened. And due to his bipolar disorder, Nick struggles to stay focused on anything for long. It's therefore doubly important that T doesn't lose sight of her role. So I've arranged a chance for her to take it further. So I, I'm going to set you both a challenge, and I think you could do. The first tea is for you. I have booked a stall yes. at Abergavenny Food Festival. Have you? Really? <laughs> so it's an opportunity for you to show your chutneys. Yes. 
Now this is September the 19th, so yeah. it's quite a long way away, it's two months away. Yeah. All you have to do is make enough chutney to display and to sell. Great yeah. advertising campaign, yeah. Monty yeah. Don survived this chutney. <laughs> Not yet, I haven't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, I was looking on the internet and I've always wanted to go to the food festival. And we were yeah. going this year as spectators. You will be going. But maybe. it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going as a store. It's important that Nick doesn't feel too pressurised. So I'm just asking him to follow through with the tasks that I previously set him. With the best will in the world, Nick, things are slightly chaotic, inevitably. Yeah, I'm pretty determined not to get much more chaotic. Right. <laughs> You've got the pigs. Stick to what we said. Get them in here in, yeah. a, in a couple of weeks. Fantastic. Stage two, make your hay. You don't have to do that yourself. No. no. In fact, my advice would be to get a contractor. Yeah, I think that's easier at the moment. So find one, ring around. Mm -hmm. I would also like to see you buy some Dexter cattle and put them on the land. You're not trying to make a fortune. Just yeah, get yeah. the land working. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I'll be there at Abergavenny Food Festival. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tasting the chutney. Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this basically... I'm really happy about the challenge that uh, Monty has set me and I'm really looking forward to going to the Abergavenny Food Festival. Hopefully. I mean, if I have a good month or so now, then I think there'll be a lot a lot more to show Monty this next time when he comes up. Mm. Two months have gone by, and it's harvest time in the fields of the Usk Valley. Nick has successfully followed through on one of my suggestions and had his own first harvest, making nearly 50 large round bales of hay. We just kept data on there, which we could tarp up nice and tidy, keep them dry. 